We'll now go into Q questions and answers. If you have any questions besides where WordCamp is going to be next year, uh, please come to one of these microphones, and I would be happy to answer it. <laughs> or try to answer it. So we'll start here first. Uh, please say uh, your name and quick question. Right. Uh, hey there, I'm Adam. Uh, my question is this. I have a prototype on my laptop right now. You mentioned editing documentation should be as easy as click and start editing it. So I have a prototype right now that takes markdown handbooks that WordPress uses and allows editing them in uh, Playground and then contributing a pull request back to GitHub. My question was this. Uh, you mentioned also uh, re reviewing flows in WordPress, all that. Do you see that m more centered around GitHub or WordPress.org in some way? Oh, good question, right? Because we're, we're a pretty good content management system. Um, it's a good question. <laughs> Uh, I think when I think about making this most accessible, like I, I mean, my background's, I'm an engineer, and so I love GitHub, I love code editors, I love all those things. I actually love Markdown, um, and Textile was another one uh, from the early days of WordPress, from the text pattern program. But I will say that if we want to make this accessible to as many people as possible, the Gutenberg editor is just going to be way beyond. And I'd be very excited with what we could start to integrate <laughs> to it. So for example, again, how do we create great feedback loops for everything? So as you're editing something or writing something, could we have like little you know, LLM giving you feedback on it? Um, and what could we do with blocks? You know? So I, I am very attracted to the kind of like committed all to GitHub. We could even synchronize it. I know we have some new two-way sync stuff going to and from WordPress. And maybe we do that just to make it easy for both sides. Like we have the WordPress, and then we sync it to to GitHub, two-way, and by the way, that's just cool in general, right? Uh, so that might be the answer that satisfies both, just like we kind of support Git and SVN still. Um, but I think that for the default, when you click at it, it should be Gutenberg. So thank you. And I can't wait to see your prototype. How about over here? Hello, Matt. Thank you so much for your great presentation. My name is Benjamin Zekovica, and I'm in the core part of the core team. And I have the community team as a core mentor. Uh, this year, I had the op uh, opportunity to be a design lead for the 6.5 update. Um, last year's, um, the multilingual uh, functionality inside WordPress has been announced for several years. Um, are there any plans on when the development will start and what features are expected for the initial release. So yeah, this is phase four of Gutenberg, yeah. which <laughs> um, not yet is the, is the easy answer. So I would say I would love to see things to continue to be explored in the plugin space, including different data models and interaction models. Um, that's the most important thing we have to, to decide to really get this in the core. Now that said, we got a lot of collaboration, which is phase three of Gutenberg to get well, right? And I've actually been sort of thinking about um, maybe even personally leading like some iteration releases where we go back just to existing features, go back to phase one, go back to phase two, and polish it and do some iterations on it. Because I think um, you know, it can be very enticing in software to always move to the new functionality, the new thing. And uh, I want to make sure that our core especially with all the new stuff we've introduced, patterns, blocks, all this sort of stuff, is just like really dialed in, really intuitive, really you know, makes the simple things intuitive and the complex things possible. Uh, I don't think we're at that standard yet right now. And so, um, yeah. I know in Europe you really, really want the multilingual. <laughs> That's why I made it phase four, uh, because I, I knew it was so important. But in the meantime, the good news is that there are some excellent plugins, including some I saw in the, in this, in the uh, the sponsor area there that can solve this problem for our users and perhaps provide a good technical framework you know, for what we do in the future. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Matt. I'm Courtney Robertson with GoDaddy. And 
I have this habit of asking you questions and then coming back a year later and let's like revisit the same thing. So stats dashboards. We spoke last about it during the Q&A here last year. Uh, the brief update is sustainability team is currently trialing some options. And you mentioned feedback loops. I want to get some feedback, maybe now, related to how teams, organizations, project leadership, and also individual contributors, be they sponsored, unsponsored, or those even just hobby contributors not wishing to be sponsored. I've been doing a lot of talking and researching while we're here, asking people, what do you envision these dashboards to look like? What's going to serve those four areas? But I really would love to get some project leadership feedback loop maybe now about what kinds of data that you're looking for, how would you implement that data, um, how would that improve contributions to WordPress in your perspective? Yeah, so I'll, hmm, we're short on time. So I'll say, I'll say the quick thing that uh, I want to fix or have to fix before we, we do more of this that's blocking it is there's some gaming right now happening of some of our stat systems. And uh, not really at the low end, but at the high end. And so I really want to make sure we, we root out all that spam uh, before we make these systems used for trustworthy things. So I feel like the data needs to be really trustworthy first before we start exposing it. And that's part of why I turned some of it off, because I was like, oh, this is actually not reflective of reality. There's some, there's some spam here, uh, or spammy behavior. So uh, we got to work on that. When we feel like the data is high integrity, um, I think we'll be able to uh, expose lots of different views. And I'm very curious to see what you do with, because uh, I have some plugins that I'm curious to look at. I also have some stuff I currently have access to at the back end that's kind of cool that I think we could make publicly accessible. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd love to hear the results of your kind of conversations with users. So thank you. All right, let's go over here. Hi, Matt. My name is Hendrik. I want to make this short. Uh, let's talk uh, database for a second. WP Post and WP Options have been our rock for a lot of years now. And uh, we've seen in the past, past uh, few years several plugins uh, go into their own data tables like WooCommerce or Yoast. Um, so when can you see like um, a way of core modernizing the database structure and make it more performant and uh, more modern? What do you think? Ah, I would actually push back that creating lots of tables is more modern or more optimized. Um, the, I think it's one of the big advantages we have over like the CCK system of Drupal or other things is that they get out of hand, right? <laughs> People make a, a database table for everything, and then it makes it much harder to integrate different sorts of things that actually are the same. They could all be in the WP Post table, for example. Um, with things like commenting or search or indexing or filtering or so. Uh, I, think, I think new tables should be rare and special. Um, I also think that with, you know, part of me wanting sites to be more dynamic is we need to bet on Moore's law. So let's not forget that the speed of processors, the transistors, everything is doubling every 18 months. <laughs> and so, you know, what used to be a performance issue now fits into RAM on a $2 a month server. <laughs> and or we're, we, you can switch to SQLite as the database backend, which we now officially support. And all the performance issues go away or something, like, because it's only a gigabyte of data. It's not like a terabyte. So I think there's a lot that can happen in an automated way. And actually, I was having a really interesting discussion at the sort of VIP Enterprise meetup last night about things we could actually do to like maybe scan queries or rewrite some things on the fly, uh, either to like object cache or, or other kind of ways that, you know, again, you don't need to necessarily create the new table to fix it. Uh, because by the way, then when all the new tables, like, OK, what are the indices? What's happening with the table cache? What are, like, there's so many things that happen um, where it's not always the best optimization. But I will then also say, like, talk to your doctor. <laughs> Every site is different. <laughs> and you know, one of my favorite axioms of engineering is profile before you optimize. So uh, we do this. You know, I showed some of that for Gutenberg. Whatever your project is that you're working on, figure out a really good profile system. A profiling way to run it against things. Uh, because it's always humbling to learn like where the actual bottlenecks are. Um, and yeah, I see you nodding. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hey, how about over here? 
Hi, <clears throat> my name is Birgit and I'm currently the spearhead of the DIB working group. Last year at WordCamp Europe, I proposed a formal DIB team. Can we finally have a people and culture team to improve and be as a shared resource for all contributors? I get asked so often if we finally get some formal team that we can be more visible with our work. Well, I'm happy to check out the proposal. Um, I would say, you know, one thing that comes to mind is that that should be embedded to every single team, right? It's part of our doing the mentorship programs. It's part of like literally everything we do, and so um, I wanted to. Ha I don't want it to be just one team, <laughs> and so I'd love to have some feedback on like where it's doing well. But I'll have to read your proposal. I don't know if there's enough things contained in that question where I could say yes or no right now. Let's do a second one over here as well. Um, because there's way more people on this side of the room <laughs> than on this side, so. Hey, Matt, Adam. Um, I love the idea of uh, blueprints for um, the playground. Um, by the way, in Drupal, they call them recipes. I like that name a lot. Ooh. Um, but I wonder what one. you think about the idea of having something similar in core itself. Uh, well, Playground is kind of core itself. What, what would you mean by core itself? I mean, like, I want to spin up an actual WordPress site, not a Playground temporary site, but I'm starting building my site, and I just want to start from a recipe. Yeah, so in core, I want to make it really easy to go between Playground and core. Yeah, I understand that part, but I just meant, like, actually bringing that same system into core. Uh, well, think of it as maybe something that will load in your browser in between. Yeah. So it's not really, like, going out. It's just like a, an intermediate step that allows us to do a lot of cool stuff in that sort of virtual machine that would be a little trickier to do on a you know, heterogeneous hosting environment on a remote server. So um, yeah, but yeah, totally, that's all going to be in core. And it's going to be kind of wild. And also just imagine like every single host in the world could have like a bunch of these recipes. By the way, thank you, Drupal. <laughs> that's a great name. We'll give full credit. Uh, that, uh, that sort of start things. And so, you know, particularly as plugins, you know, the 60,000 plugins are creating such unique experiences. So, like, you know, start the Sensei recipe or the WP Job Manager or the, you know, whatever it is, like, that create these, like, really unique things would be so cool. Um, all right, over here. Hey there, Matt. Uh, I'm Matteo again. We, we met on the after party. Uh, I'll be super, super fast. Uh, I hope, again, to, to, to see you also at this after party. The, the question for you today is this one. So uh, I'm now uh, a part of the, of the Meetup organization team of, uh, of Milan. Uh, we, and I think that we are not alone, uh, we use a, a WordPress.com's uh, platform to build our site. But since we don't want to invest for now money or we don't have sponsors for now to cover that, uh, we use a free plan that consider also advertisement. And that's understandable for, uh, you know, a site for someone. But in case of a WordPress project, why don't provide at least a way to delete advertisement and provide a bit more of freedom to uh, the person, um, to, to, the, to, the, to the people inside the WordPress project for building sites of, of about uh, WordPress meetup, for example? What do you think about that? Is Daniel here? Or is Daniel? Do you want to give a free creator plan to every WordPress meetup? All right, there you go. <laughs> now you have it. <laughs> and you get a site, and you get a site, and you get. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go really quickly if we have five extra minutes because we just have, I think, four more questions. So I'll try to get through these really quickly, and then we'll. We'll get the organizers on stage, and you can hear where WordCamp's going to be next year. So let's do some quick ones to wrap it up. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So hi, Matt. My name is Sumit Singh, and I'm, active, I'm actively involved in the core team and training team. And I have one question regarding the upcoming WordPress update. So is there any integration of the AI or automation future plan in future update, like, you know, all the other CMS platform already done, like Wix, Squarespace, and other. So any update about the upcoming future on the WordPress AI things? Because right, everyone talking about the AI right now. So my quick answer to AI stuff is check out the WWDC presentation from Monday. Um, 
I think we're in kind of a, a liminal period right now where these are like remote APIs you call. And there's some cool stuff where you can run these models like on your own servers. And there's some small models that actually run on device. But now it, it looks like the dominant UI for this is probably not going to be conversational or chat. Um, and it will be embedded into browsers and operating systems in really, really cool ways. And I think Apple showed the most interesting version of that I've seen so far. I can't wait to see what Google and Microsoft and what everyone else does with this. Okay. And so I think some of these features that right now you would have to integrate with a proprietary service, which obviously we wouldn't do, wouldn't do in core, will actually just kind of built, be built into the clients we all use to access WordPress, so um, the operating systems and browsers. Uh, so that, that would be my quick answer to that. So, Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's you. awesome. Right over here. <laughs> really great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Matt. My name is Jessica, and I'm a developer at Great. And I was yesterday at the speed building challenge on stage. Oh. And my question for you is, when will you do a speed building challenge? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, was that a challenge? It felt like a challenge. Yes, this it was. was the, is the gauntlet thrown? All right, let's do one. <laughs> Matthias, you got to train me. <laughs> this will be fun. And the cool thing about speed building challenges is that everyone wins because everyone watching it will get to learn from what we do or what we get stuck on. Like, uh, so thank you, Jessica. That was really fun. Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, last question. Yeah, a quick one for, for the last question. Um, Torsten from the German community, my question is, um, if a plugin is permanently closed, mm. there's no way to see it in the back end on the plugins page. And this is a huge security issue, oh, I wow. think. Huh. So what do we do? Yeah, we should fix that. Can we write that down? Yeah. So thank you for the bug report. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's nice to put the bug in front of 3,000 people when I'm on stage to get it fixed quickly. So we'll, we'll see how fast we can get that ticket uh, going. Um, hey, I've got, I just want to say thank you, Torino. Mille grazie. <laughs> this has been amazing. Um, the community is amazing. You know, I took a, a short sabbatical this year of a few months, and I really, really missed y'all. So it's so good to be back, and I uh, can't wait to see you later at the party. Bye-bye.